What's up, guys and gals? Iceman here. Welcome to Chilling Tales. So Aaron was only 31 years of age when this tragic, horrific incident took place. And that which his kids had to witness was completely harrowing. This attack took place in recent times, July of 2018, Century Island, Northeast Canada. Now, the thing about this area, the tundra, the sea, the landmass, and so forth, it's just so wide open with no trees. There's just no escape that people would have if they're in an encounter with a bear. And what's extremely concerning about polar bears, and I know I've mentioned this on previous videos, they can run 35 miles an hour. They're known, and they're the only species of bear that are known, to actually hunt human beings in a naturalistic manner. They'll stalk them like how they stalk seals. They'll see humans as simply something that is lower than them on the food chain. They don't seem to have that instinctive fear that other bears have, especially in modern times. And some folks are saying that the data in which we're given from the higher-ups isn't all that accurate. Apparently, the Inuits of the land are only able to harvest X amount of polar bears per month or per year. And... There's a lot of claims that it's not sustainable, like it's not enough food for them and the bear population is growing. But of course, then the other side will say, well, it's because the climate is reducing uh, in terms of uh, it's staying uh, cold or whatever. So it's bringing all the bears inland. I don't really know which way it goes, but nonetheless, people are reporting more polar bear sightings in these areas and there's not much they can do about it. Now, they're allowed to shoot them if they're aggressive toward them, but that's it. And that's kind of what we see in this story. So polar bears can swim for days. So if you're on the tundra, there's really no escape. You can't outrun them. You can't try and climb a damn tree. You can't try and swim away because they're going to get you. A lot of people don't know this, but they're actually the largest of the bears on average. And if you think about it, their diet is 100% carnivorous. They have those massive fangs. All right. They're not eating berries because there's no shrubs. They're not digging in the ground, eating grubs or whatever, or digging through bark because there are no trees. All right. These things are eating walruses and seals and maybe, I don't know, other things, but... They're eating other mammals. So they're just so familiar with that, with hunting what lives and breathes. They're the most methodical hunters of the bears because they hunt uh, just more than any other bear. That's almost the entirety of their diet is what they hunt and kill. So Aaron and his one son and three daughters decided to go stern egg hunting on this island. So these sterns, they're kind of like seagulls, and they'll fly around, they'll scatter, they'll squawk. So people go and they'll hunt the nests, right? And because the, the eggs are very desirable in some communities. So they'll harvest the eggs, and they'll bring them home and cook them just like chicken eggs. They're a little smaller than chicken eggs. They're kind of like quail eggs or something. But these birds... They'll just fly around and squawk and squawk and squawk when you're trying to steal the eggs, right? So Aaron parks the boat at the island. He lets his kids go on ahead, his three daughters and his one son. And these are all young kids. They're like 12 and under. So the kids scatter a bit. They get the stern eggs. Their sterns just making noise all over the place, which I think deterred Aaron from being able to hear the bear. So his daughter was at a nest, gathering a couple eggs, and Aaron, from 
about halfway from where the boat was to the daughter, and the daughter was here, and the boat was back here, he noticed something going on in the distance. Like there was some snow blowing over, but he almost saw a still figure gazing back at them, just steering through this, this haze of snow. It's almost as though he could see the eyes of it glowing. And he thought to himself, I don't have my weapon on me. Now, as crazy as it sounds, the one weapon Aaron had with him, I have one right here, was a 22 long rifle. And here's one right here. Just a very narrow bullet. Very weak shot. I mean, this is good for birds, but squirrels, you know, things like that. But for a bear? Are you kidding me? He obviously wasn't prepared to be confronted by a polar bear. So it struck his mind how his rifle was in the vehicle. Now, it was in the boat. But that would have helped, of course. I mean, something like this, you get like nine or ten shots repeatedly, semi-automatic, just as fast as you can pull the trigger. Uh, I don't think his had a magazine, just like how this one doesn't have a magazine. It's tube-fed. I do have one that has a magazine where you could switch them out and put more in there. But it's hard to say. Some would argue that that would only anger the bear and invigorate its ferocity and cause it to attack. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, but yeah, I'd rather be with a boomstick than without one. But he found himself standing there. At 31 years of age, seeing his daughter foraging through the stern nest with a bear about 50 yards out. And he saw that creature facing toward her with its back hunched like a cat, just staring at her. And then the haze of snow covered it again, almost causing the creature to disappear in the snow. So Aaron did what he thought was best he didn't run back to the boat that could have startled the creature it would have made his daughter more accessible because these bears they are methodical they're not generally just going to charge into a group of humans you know what i mean they're like us in a way when we're hunting if we see a prey that's on its own with very little threats it's more likely uh, that you're going to be able to, to get what you want from that prey without making yourself too vulnerable. So I think the bear knows this, and Aaron knew this. So Aaron stood his ground, and he yelled to his daughter, who looked over at him, and then looked back to the nest, and then looked out into the distance, and saw what appeared to be that large figure staring back at her. Aaron did not back up. So he looked to the ground for anything he could grab. And he grabbed some rocks, a couple rocks that weren't very large, but were about, they were good size to fit in his hand. And maybe he could do some damage with them. He began running toward his daughter while shouting to his other children, go back to the boat, go back to the boat. His oldest daughter, crouched there above the stern nest, frozen in fear for a moment. And then he yells to her as he's approaching, Run back to the boat! Run back to the boat! So the girl stands up, drops the stern eggs, doesn't look back, and just runs toward the boat. So she's running this way, and Aaron's running this way toward her. And that's when the bear starts following her. Now, it's not running at full speed, but it's just swiftly and elegantly moving toward her like it's in a pursuit. Like it's not entirely sure that it wants to go after him, but it's curious now. This young, small, vulnerable prey began to run. So it's going to follow it. Aaron passes his daughter. Run to the boat! Run to the boat! And then he stops. And he tells her to keep running. So she's running back to the boat. And the bear, of course, is over here. 
And as soon as she passes him, he stops in his tracks and he doesn't move. And then she just keeps going. So Aaron is standing here looking into the bear's eyes. And now the creature might feel taunted. I'm not sure. But it was the time of year when polar bears, they weren't really harvesting as much food, so it could have been a telling sign that this thing was hungry. It may have been an unhealthy bear. Which may have contributed to its pursuit of humans. So... Aaron stands his ground and yells at it. Go, bears! Waving his arms around. Get out of here! Get out of here, bear! Get out of here! And the bear looks back at him. And that's when it lowers its head. Like, it feels like it's threatened. But it also knows that there's opportunity here, right? I mean, they're not st- they know that they're a lot larger and stronger than humans. Some even speculate they can perceive if they have a firearm in their hands. Like, they know that these things are weapons that the humans use. And he didn't have one. He just had a couple rocks. I mean, I don't know if that factored in here or not, but it's something to be noted. So the bear puts down its ears, and that's that's a telling sign when they're going to attack. A bluff charge, they'll look curious. Like, they'll have their ears up like this, and they'll charge you, and then they'll back away when they get close. But a real charge is when they have their head down. Like, you can almost subconsciously realize this. I think it's just embedded in our nature. To have these inklings of, oh yeah, this one is, this is going to be a fake charge, or this is, this is real charge. But it's important to know these gestures that the bears will give off. Its head was low, and it just began heaving toward him, just lunging toward him. And Aaron beat the rocks together and yelled at it, but it didn't stop it. His kids were back at the boat at this point, so he looks back at the boat, and he looks at the bear, and he looks back at the boat, and he's like, Call the authorities! Call the police! So the kids begin radioing for help. And at that point, Aaron decided to turn his back to the animal and run. Which unfortunately may have been his most detrimental mistake. I don't know. Would it have left if he stood his ground? Or threw rocks at it. I mean, I don't know. Probably not. So he begins running back to the boat, right? The kids are way over here. And he's running back to the boat. And that's when the bear goes on a full-blown charge. And it charges, charges, charges. It tackles him to the ground. And his kids are watching this come alive in front of their eyes. And the bear, the way polar bears attack, they have a long neck. And they have these massive fangs. Very strong, but long. And uh, somewhat lanky forearms. Right, and they just it just begins digging into him like he's a seal, and then it digs down around his shoulder, it grabs him here, and it just throws him. Like you can see videos of these things throwing two hundred pound uh, seals like they weigh nothing, and plus plus that three hundred pound animals and beyond. It hurled him over its shoulder, and his carcass just flings like a rag doll and slams back into the ground. The kids are watching this all take place. And then the bear just begins digging into him, and it chomps and chomps into his neck, and it a massive gouge out of his neck, and just blood spewing everywhere. And it looks back up at the kids with just this blood draining from its mouth, just these soulless eyes staring back at them as they're screaming bloody hell. And then it digs back into him, dig back, digs back into him, digs and digs and digs. And then it looks at Aaron again, and the blood is just coming, draining down its face. And, like, have you seen that before? The contrast is just wicked. With the polar bear, that red blood against the white fur. What a harrowing thing. And the kids, of course, are screaming bloody hell. And the authorities, I can't remember who they were, they came in a chopper. It was a popular island, and the, and the weather wasn't that bad. So this thing is just mulling the hell out of Aaron. At this point, his body's just lifeless. You know, he tried to grab it by the eyes. He tried, but it just pinned his arms down, bit him in the neck, hurled him around, slammed him into the ground at least once or twice. 
and dug through him like he was a piece of meat. And those soulless eyes just gazing at the children in the boat, just chomping, just, just flesh of Aaron, just hanging, dangling from its mouth. And just the blood dripping in the reddish face is just, it's something else. I've seen videos of these things attacking seals and walruses, and they become a bloody mess. It began eating Aaron's lifeless body there in front of his children. Eventually, the authorities showed up. The kids were horrified still in the boat. Fortunately, the bear didn't go back to him. It stayed with the body of Aaron. That was like 100 yards, 70 yards from the boat. The snow blowing over the scene. Just the occasional, you could see the bear. Just this heaping body standing over the carcass. Looking around, just, just making a meal out of it. By the time the authorities got there, the bear was gone. They just found Aaron's mangled carcass half eaten eventually they found the bear with the blood all over its mouth all over its paws i don't think they even had to do a dna test but they shot the thing dead to my understanding it took several shots usually use something like a 12 gauge with a polar bear something like this nice pump action nice reliable 12 gauge with either buckshot or slugs Probably slugs. It took a couple rounds. They kept a safe distance. And they took the thing down. It was a male. I think it weighed like 800 pounds. Something ridiculous. Which isn't even record breaking for a polar bear. They get heavy. These things get huge. They don't look that way because they're so nimble. They're, body, they're tall. They're more like cats. In fact, they're more like the old short-faced bears. Not to that extent. But just that they're a bit more lanky than, say, a, a thick grizzly. And their skin is thick. Their skin is just so thick. It's hard to penetrate it with anything. But yeah, these kids, uh, they got to live with that for the rest of their lives now. And, um, I mean, I don't know what could have been done different. Could have had a boomstick handy, obviously. Could have had bear spray. But, you know, when you live in a place like that, when you go out every day, and these attacks are quite rare, you just get comfortable with your life. You know what I mean? Just like how we get comfortable. Like people can live in a, uh, a city that has crime. You can go out without pepper spray, you know? But it could just be one of those days where you run in to doom. And you just never know what day that's going to be. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about that story. Polar bear attacks, I don't cover them too often. They're rare, but I'm they're one of the bears that I'm most fascinated in. Because it's a bit deceiving. They don't look as fierce as a grizzly, but they are. It wouldn't appear that they're larger than grizzlies, but they are. You know, if you were to see them next to each other, polar bears are on another level. And they're the most carnivorous of the bears. Even though Coca-Cola uses them as a little symbol or whatever, I mean, they, they could be dangerous. All right. More videos to come on these matters. Black bear attacks, grizzly attacks, Kodiak bear attacks, polar bear attacks, maybe the occasional sloth bear. But yeah, black bears is the area in which I live, so I'll be posting some footage of black bears on my Patreon and my channel members page on YouTube if uh, I get some also exclusive content. So become a patron or a channel member if you guys want to help me out. And thank you all for your support, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace be with you.